Hey up YouTube, Sam from Sam's Guide of Maintenance and in this video today I want to uh, have a chat with you about battery gear and uh, basically look at it from the sense of the more you spend on it are you actually getting better value or are you actually getting basically the value that you need uh, because I honestly think the more you spend on it it's diminishing returns now I'm not on about, you know, once you've invested in your stuff because I think some of the battery gear is worth having, uh, I really do. So I would say anything that you pick up and hold with your two hands, so hedge trimmers, chainsaws, even the blower, like the handheld blowers to a degree, um, strimmers, yeah, I know, I know the runtime's not amazing on it and this is one of the things that everybody gets asked is, What's the runtime like on them? Well, it's one of them. I could get, I could put a battery in a strimmer, and it will last me two days. You know, because I'm just whipping around the edges. What's that? Two minutes at a time, five minutes at a time. Put it back in the van. I've noticed that battery stuff, if you use it solid uh, under heavy load, it really nukes it. Uh, but if you were to sort of spread that same load out on with like little breaks in between it does seem to last a lot longer uh, i'm not saying you know do that you know because that'd be stupid you know we've, we need to but i have noticed where i've done especially with super long grass where i've just strimmed it continuous uh, i've noticed by strimming a bit breaking it off strimming the rest you know breaking it off i've noticed the battery seems to last longer but in reality if that's what you're sort of worrying about then I think we need to sort of look at getting something that's different than that because you know we need to be so we need to have a tool that we can use and we can basically use to get the job done as quickly as efficiently as possible so if I had a lot of streaming to do I would go in my van I would pick up my 131R combi thing and I would use that get it brimmed with fuel and I would use it yes it wouldn't make for a more enjoyable time it's noisy, it's loud, uh, and this is why I even like the strimmer and the blowers because they're the two sort of tools that uh, basically, you know, make the most noise. Uh, and actually, in a way, it doesn't need to be. Uh, you know, at the moment, leaf blowers have got a bit of a uh, bad reputation. There's a lot of people, you know, gunning for the blood of anybody who uses a leaf blower. It is so you know, I think it just makes for a nicer experience. So, I am very, very happy in general with all of my tools that I've purchased. Uh, even the Ego Mail, I know I've rained on it a bit in the past, uh, but at this time of the year, you really can't fault it. The Ego Mail really does like you know, dry grass and at the moment, it's bone dry. Uh, and you know it takes care of that not a problem what it doesn't like is long wet thick grass uh, it just just doesn't like it at all uh, but so yeah that's the sort of low end sort of stuff but even when you price it up so for me uh, if I was to say look at uh, the Ego Mower pricing that up as a kit with a couple of batteries uh, and you do, I think when you get into court, you really do need two batteries. Uh, unless it's like the super big stuff, but I'll get on to that. You really do, because the last thing you want is to be running out of battery. Uh, you know, especially if you've only got one, you know, you then you're sort of charging up. It's, it's not ideal. So, for me, uh, the Ego, when I bought it last year, I managed to get it on a deal. I'm sure it's about 750 quid where I've got a seven and a half amp battery pack. Uh, I'll have to look back on the video, but I've got that number in my head. So I've got a seven and a half hour, seven and a half amp hour battery. I got a four amp battery pack. Uh, and I got the actual mower. It's a 19 inch, the LM19, something like that. Uh, and a fast charger, and that was 750. But looking this year, I priced up, uh, and I've not spent hours and hours and hours looking, but I've had a good look, uh, and I've priced it up, and for two 5 amp battery packs, the Moe 
is 850 or 860 something like that now this is what i'm getting to if you sort of equate that to performance well i would put the ego mower you know performance wise on t on par with say a still uh probably middle of range mower like the 44 like, is it 485 or something uh which is just a four wheel you know plastic box and in a way if i had a choice you know gun to me head somebody said right you can only have one of these two mowers uh, and it would be a sort of main mower well i would probably pick the still one to be fair because i think it would do your best all around and that clocks in at about 500 quid so what are the main benefits you know well you're just getting quiet quieter mowing you're getting you know battery the benefits are i honestly think with mowers there's not that much vibration yes there is and yes the petrol engine does generate vibration and noise but you don't tend to feel it as much with a mower because your hands are so far away and the handles sort of you know dampen it i've done mowing for a long period of time and i never get tingly hands but if i use say a strimmer you know a petrol strimmer i do so i always sort of think you know what are you actually getting for that extra what is it 450 quid you know 500 quid you know you're just getting that quieter that you know quietness um some people say like i used to think our oh, customers would love it very very few people actually will will take you on for the merits of that um uh, you know but it is one where you know some people appreciate it i appreciate it more than customers in general most customers from my findings don't give a shit they just want a job doing they don't really care what you use whether you plug into their electric or you use you know that so just sort of think about that i suppose if you've got like noise sensitive areas then yeah you would spend that extra 500 quid but just have to see on that one now when you start spending more and more money that's when i actually think you, you sort of get even less so last year i was looking at a backpack blower and i was looking at the still backpack blower because uh, i like still stuff i've never used anything else so i stick with what i know and there's a good still dealer near me so for me it makes more sense to stick with them um but they've got this uh they got the new cordless backpack blower and i was like oh you know what i like the look at that uh two grand with a battery uh, i think that's the 3000 one or whatever the, the, the biggest battery and again if you've only got you know the batteries are so much money you may as well spend that extra to get the biggest possible battery you can because you don't want two smaller ones but then you've still only got one battery so if it is you have to charge up you're hooped really so like i said that's a couple of grand and then the uh, i was looking at the br600 which is what i got that was about 560 quid just, just thinking top of my head so you know to me you can get like nearly four backpack blowers for the same price as one of these big bad boy you know backpack electric blowers and i suppose in a way that's all the power i need from a 600 you know i think it's boring enough for me uh, again if you've got you know like noise sensitive contracts yes you've got to sort of go for that but i think for the average person the average gardener the, the pricing it out and yeah i know that you've got you know i'm not necessarily talking about the cost here because if you want it you get it and if you need it you get it doesn't really matter what the cost is you know you, you, you've got to get it haven't you uh, but i'm just saying it's like diminishing returns so if it is that i was to get that backpack blower with the battery then i thought well i can you know use it to run my streamer or other tools with an adapter but then you need to buy the adapter you need to buy a backpack carry thing for it so you know it's just that's thing that's another couple hundred quid there straight away um I think the best example of this is what I saw was uh, I'm looking at getting a weed ripper. I've got a lot of weedy patios, um, 
and I'm thinking, you know what, this would be just a, a nice sort of tool just to sort of, you know, get them all on top of. Um, and it's another sort of service I can offer. And uh, they've got like a smaller one and a bigger one. I think the smaller one will be fine for me. I'm not doing huge areas. And it was 950 quid off the top of my head from Westerman's. And uh, I thought, yeah, you know what, I'm going to get that. Uh, so yeah, 950 quid. But they do a cordless one, and that's 1350. So you're paying 400 pound extra for the cordless one. But then it's not a brand that I've seen any other garden tools made in. And would you take a, a risk on that? You know, say if you said, oh, this battery will fit. You know all these other tools well I don't want to you know get into another tool platform so I think if it had an ego battery on it wouldn't be so bad but it doesn't it has this just this random unnamed brand um, and I'm thinking to myself yeah you know it looks all right but you paid 400 pound extra for you know the limitations which is battery unfortunately um, yes if you've got noise sensitive all that it's good but I would say overall, it's you know it's just another thing that's and just a sort of another sort of a, you know cost basically, which you know is that going to equal, equal you know more value? And I don't think it does, unfortunately. Um, as bad as it sounds, they do say it's got a couple of hours runtime, but again, does it? I don't know. Uh, but I, that's not for me. I won't be taking a gamble on that. So overall, I'm not trying to put people off cordless and, you know, in a way, I'm saying go for it because, you know, the handheld stuff's brilliant in my opinion, but I think the more you sort of spend, the actually the less you get. But then again, you know, on a sort of, you know, a flip side to it is that, uh, yes, you're sort of getting less, uh, but I can see why because they've got to develop the technology like I'm not ignorant they've got to develop this technology they've got to get it marketed they've got to get it ready you know it's a niche sort of thing anyway so you know you can't expect them to sort of develop this backpack blower this still one uh, and yes you know the batteries are very expensive to make but you know in a way without sounding rude this isn't something you know we should we we focus on what's best for us and i think what's best for us unfortunately for the foreseeable is the petrol stuff it is if it is that they make it mandatory that you've got to go for it then you'd have to go for it but i think by and large the majority of us will stick with what's the best value and at the moment it's back it's petrol uh, me included i would use the big petrol mowers over say getting a battery mower i'd like to i'd love to try the still is it rma 765 the twin clip one with the twin blades i would love to try that uh, but then i'm thinking to myself it's always that limited you'd always be sort of thinking like oh, i'm gonna run out of battery or you know and then backpack batteries they're so expensive you can't have two of them i couldn't afford two of them it would be a stretch to get the kit um for me personally so i couldn't be having two of them you know knocking around uh maybe if they did something like with crest where you could say if he said right we'll give you this box you put it in your van you charge it up at home you put your battery in and it'll charge it up x amount of times and it'll be x amount you know maybe something looking into that i don't know but uh, another thing which i'll mention quickly is I've noticed a saving in terms of saving money from not using petrol to using cordless and I think that's all very well we, we you know you've got to admit there is a saving but I think it's so I think if you've got staff you need to really rem remember this and I've done it myself and I think we've all done it in a way as I don't know why they've done it I, in a way I'm actually tempted to uh, mask the batteries off and paint them because especially the still ones they've got that orange band at the front but the rest of it's all black and it's very easy to put one down on a customer's wall while you're swapping battery drive off and then suddenly realize like 
shit, you know, I forgot a battery. And I think if you've got staff, then batteries could go missing. I'm not saying they'll rob them, but you know, they can they can get lost easy. Uh, and if you say you kit your staff out and you've got a van full of batteries, I can guarantee what you've saved on batteries, uh, and sorry, fuel, two straight mix, as soon as they lose a battery, that's all that savings gone. Uh, I know there's nothing to do about, you know, it's not the manufacturer's fault, but I think it's worth mentioning because I'm guilty of it. I've lost one. Luckily, I went back and it was still on the wall and I've got it. But, you know, I am actually tempted to sort of mask off and just, you know, or just get some high-vis tape, just whack it round them because, you know, it's it's hard enough for us is to sort of keep making money and, you know, make money and put money away. The last thing we want is to sort of lose a battery and then it's, well, it's all them savings gone, isn't it? But have a good day, guys, and as usual, keep on gardening.